On June 19th, 2013, at the Chesapeake Heritage Center, the Queen Anne's County Department of Tourism and Ken Allen Heritage Society sponsored a free public screening of the documentary film, The Black Captains of the Chesapeake. Some of the watermen who were the subject of the documentary were in attendance and were recognized at the meeting. Before the show, we were able to tape an interview with the producer-director of the film. In this interview, you will learn a bit more about the origin of the production and some background on the filmmaker himself. Enjoy. Name is S. Toriano, S. period, Toriano, T-O-R-R-I-A-N-O, Berry, B-E-R-R-Y. I am the producer and director of Black Captains of the Chesapeake documentary. Actually, I teach uh, television and film production at Howard University. I have my MFA in uh, motion picture and television production from UCLA. And I actually started out in still photography in high school. Yeah, so I've got my undergrad degree, BA from Arizona State in photography and art, art photography, yeah. Well, being a fisherman, I like catching fish. And when I first came to uh, Howard University to teach back in 1990, of course, you know, when I wasn't teaching, I'd go try to catch some fish. So I went various places, um, you know, usually like off land. Um, I went out of, you know, um, Chesapeake Beach. Um, one time I drove way out of um, Ocean City, went way down to Point Lookout, and it was like, you know, good fishing, but just a bit too far to drive. So for 14 years, and I just, you know, tried fishing wherever I could fish. Um, one day I was coming home, I had a house in the southeast, and um, I pulled up and a guy who lived across the street from me, you know, had, was in his driveway, his trunk was open, he had coolers and, you know, fishing poles. So I went across and started talking to him. So he said, yeah, I go out to Kent Narrows and da 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 and there's some black captains. I said, what? Black captains, you know, because I would you know, been out on a lot of head boats and a couple of charters. I had never seen a black captain or heard of one. And so, you know, I decided to come with him and uh, I brought my camera. You know, the whole intent was basically just to, you know, maybe a little five, 10 minute, you know, a little, you know, highlights or something. Um, but, you know, once I got, we out, went out with Captain Butler that first time. And after I got the material with Captain Butler, you know, then I came back and uh, shot um, Captain um, Montro Wright. Um, and then I went out with Captain, um, Captain Roy, Captain, um, Daryl Roy, you know, and one of the best interviews I say would probably be with uh, Captain George Roy, and I got that just by a fluke. Uh, my father was in town, and uh, we went to go fishing out there, and unfortunately, none of the boats were going out that day. But there's this guy, you know, sitting in this truck drinking some coffee, and it said, you know, George Roy, you know, charter captain. So I went and talked to him, asked if I could interview him. He said, yeah, sure, you know. So I got some really, really good, you know, material from uh, from Captain Roy that day. And unfortunately, you know, he wasn't around when I finished the piece, but, um, you know, I, I actually know, you know, in memory, you know, I, I made the documentary in memory on him, you know, because he was a great guy. Yeah, I've been on the water exactly 53 years. I started on the water in 1951. I was 18 years old, and I'm 71 years of age now. I had three boats at one time, now I'm down to one, and that's, and that's the plenty. I think the main thing that I discovered along the way was the fact that, you know, black watermen, first of all, I, I hadn't even heard of a waterman. You know, the fact that there were people that actually make their living, you know, on the water, you know, and, and on the bay, harvesting the bay. So I think that was one of the main things, and of course, you know, just the overall history, you know, that the, the black captains and the black watermen play, you know, in uh, harvesting the bay and uh, the Chesapeake. Um, a couple of the captains told me about um, about Vince Liggett, you know, Admiral Vince Liggett, you know, said he's got a lot of history. So I contacted him and was able to interview him. And as far as the historical elements, the historical aspect, you know, Mr. Liggett just laid down the history, you know, from back when, you know, the, you know, slavery, you know, first came in and you know, all the way up and how everything worked, you know, um, leading up to, you know, today. And so that was, that was really kind of nice. So. Uh, you'd ask earlier, the film was shot on actually four fishing trips. Uh, then the, the Mr. Liggett's interview was a separate, you know, uh, interview that I did. And then, of course, Mr. George Roy, his interview was separate. So that's probably about five to six, you know, individual shooting dates that, that I had. And um, it actually sat, the footage sat probably for a good nine months to a year or so. And... Uh, <laughs> I totaled out in my car. <laughs> I had a, a minivan and unfortunately I totaled it out on the beltway. And I purposely didn't get another car, you know, immediately. So I have spent a lot of time at home, 
because they didn't have transportation. And that's when I started doing the editing. And then that's, of course, you know, that's when I started to realize, well, I've got more than five or 10 minutes here, you know? So I ended up with the 56 minute piece, you know, that, that, that we've seen. The movie's been received, I mean, wonderfully. In fact, uh, the initial premiere that we had at, uh, at Captain Meredith's um, seafood shop was phenomenal. I mean, of course, the place was standing room only. Um, in fact, there was, of course, a lot of other black captains that unfortunately, you know, I wasn't able to interview that, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know them, you know, but, um, you know, they all were, were excited. And I think the main thing that I guess that pleased me, you know, was the pride that I actually saw in these men's faces, you know, as they watch, you know, as they, as they watch the documentary, yeah. you know, so I think that's, that's probably the main thing. Now, I'm still waiting for one of them to give me a pro bono free fishing trip, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Since it's aired on Maryland Public Television, I've gotten you know, several phone calls from people interested in ordering the DVDs, you know, which has been you know, very gratifying. Because you know, I said I basically just did it out of my pocket. You know, there really was no budget to it. It was just me and the camera you know, and whoever was standing in front of the camera. You know, so you know, I appreciate that, that people uh, you know, are, are appreciating it. And to have the screening here tonight you know, with the, uh, you know, the Heritage Society is, you know, that's a what, coup de gras or whatever you want to call it, you know, so it's a blessing. It's a blessing. I'm glad I was able to do it. I'm glad it's been received the way, you know, it's being received. And again, it's just a, a part of history that people need to know about. I went 14 years without knowing about it. You know, hopefully now a lot more people will know and they don't have to wait that long. Uh, well, I, I have order forms. I have order forms and uh, you can you know, email me at sberry, B-E-R-R-Y, S-B-E-R-R-Y, sberry, at howard.edu. I could send you an order form and you can send it in and, uh, with a check and I'll send you a DVD out. Uh, they're basically uh, $25 per DVD plus $5 shipping and handling for up to four DVDs. You know, so if you, you know, order four, it's just $5 for shipping all four of them to the same location, of course. <laughs> <You know? laughs>